Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Everyday English Dialogues. Today's video is about conversations on laundry day. Let's get started. Part 1 The Washing Machine, A Guide to Cycles and Sorting Characters Emily, a young woman in her thirties who just moved to New York City. Catherine, a woman in her thirties who is Emily's college friend and has been living in New York for many years. Catherine, help. I can't figure out how to use this washing machine. Don't worry, I'll help you. Great. I thought I was going to ruin all my clothes. Don't worry, this washing machine is very easy to use. First, you need to sort your clothes. Sort? What do you mean? It means putting clothes of similar colors together. For example, white clothes should be washed with other white clothes, and dark clothes should be washed with other dark clothes. This will prevent colors from bleeding. Oh, I see. So should I put these white clothes and these light-colored clothes together? Yes, that's fine. You can also put these jeans and towels together. Okay, I'll give it a try. Good, I'll show you how. First, you need to put the clothes in the washing machine. Okay, I put them in. Then you need to add detergent. The amount of detergent needed is usually indicated on the bottle cap. Okay, I found it. Then you need to select a wash cycle. Different clothes require different wash cycles. For example, white clothes need to be washed on the white cycle, and jeans need to be washed on the denim cycle. I found the white cycle. Good, finally you need to press the start button. Okay, I pressed it. Great. Now the washing machine will start working. That's great. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Summary Part 1 of the dialogue introduces the basic steps of using a washing machine, including sorting, adding detergent, selecting a wash cycle, and starting the machine. Part 2, The Art of Air Drying, Tips for Different Types of Clothes Now that the washing machine is working its magic, let's talk about drying your clothes. Do you have a dryer in your apartment? No, unfortunately, there isn't one. My apartment is quite small. No problem. You can still dry your clothes without a dryer. You can hang them on a drying rack or clothesline. A drying rack? What's that? It's a portable stand with bars where you can hang your clothes. Most hardware stores or online retailers sell them. Okay, I can get one of those. Is there a specific place I should hang the drying rack? Ideally, you want to hang it somewhere with good air circulation. Maybe near a window or by a fan. I think I can manage that. Anything else I should be aware of when air drying? Sure. It's important to avoid direct sunlight, especially for dark colored clothes. Sunlight can fade the color over time. Good to know. How long does it usually take for clothes to air dry? It depends on the thickness of the clothes and the air circulation. Lighter clothes and towels will dry faster than jeans or sweaters. On a good day, it could take anywhere from a few hours to a whole day. Hmm, that might be a bit inconvenient. Is there anything else I can do to speed up the process? There are a few tricks. You can wring out some of the excess water from the clothes after the washing cycle is complete. Just be gentle. You don't want to damage the fabric. Using a towel to absorb some moisture can also help. Those sound like good ideas. Thanks, Catherine. No problem. We can talk about some other laundry tips next, like stain removal or how to keep your clothes looking their best. That would be great. 
I feel like I'm learning a lot already. That's the goal. Laundry might seem like a chore, but with some practice, it can be pretty easy. Summary. Part two of the dialogue focuses on drying clothes without a dryer. It introduces drying racks, air circulation tips, and strategies to accelerate air drying. Part three: Ironing Mastery: Secrets to Smooth Garments. All right, the washing machine just finished its cycle. Time to move these clothes to the drying rack. Perfect. Just be careful not to overload the rack. Spreading the clothes out will allow for better air circulation and faster drying. Got it. So, where should I hang these jeans? Jeans can be a bit tricky. Folding them in half and hanging them by the waistband is a good option. You can also hang them by one leg for better airflow, especially for thicker denim. Okay, that makes sense. What about these delicate shirts? For delicates, it's best to lay them flat on the drying rack instead of hanging them. Hanging can stretch them out of shape. Oh, I wouldn't have known that. Thanks for the tip. No problem. Now let's talk about laundry detergent a bit more. There are different types available, so it's important to choose the right one for your clothes. Like, what kind of differences are there? Well, there's regular detergent for everyday clothes. Then there's high efficiency. Heat detergent for high efficiency washing machines. Heat detergent is more concentrated, so you don't need as much. My washing machine doesn't say anything about being high efficiency, so I guess I should just use regular detergent, right? Exactly. Using the wrong type of detergent can lead to suds buildup in your machine, which can be a hassle. Also, be mindful of the amount you use. Too much detergent can leave residue on your clothes. Wow, laundry seems to have a lot of little details. It does, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes second nature. We'll cover ironing and some other finishing touches next time. Sounds good. I feel much more confident about tackling laundry now. Summary. Part three of the dialogue discusses strategies for hanging different types of clothes on a drying rack, along with choosing the right laundry detergent and using the appropriate amount. Part four: Stain Removal Tips: How to Deal with Common Stains. So, Catherine, you mentioned ironing next. Is that something I really need to do? Not necessarily. Ironing can definitely make your clothes look crisp and polished, but it's not essential for everything. T-shirts and jeans, for example, usually don't need ironing. That's a relief. What kind of clothes typically benefit from ironing? Dress shirts, blouses, pantsuits, and anything with wrinkles or creases. Ironing can also help to freshen up clothes that have been stored for a while. Okay, and how exactly do I use an iron? I've never ironed before. No worries, it's pretty straightforward. First, you need to check the care label on your clothes. It will indicate the recommended ironing temperature for the fabric. Care label? Where would that be? It's usually a small tag sewn inside the garment. Look for symbols that indicate ironing temperature settings. A single dot for low heat, two dots for medium heat, and three dots for high heat. I see. Then what? Fill the iron with water if it's a steam iron, and adjust the temperature setting according to the care label. Then, iron the garment on a smooth ironing board in sections, following the grain of the fabric. Grain of the fabric. It means the direction the threads run in the material. Ironing with the grain will help to prevent stretching or damage. 
Wow, this is all so helpful. Is there anything else I should know about ironing? Sure. Always use a pressing cloth for delicate fabrics or anything with embellishments. A pressing cloth is a thin piece of fabric placed between the iron and your garment for extra protection. Also, avoid ironing over zippers or buttons, as it can damage them. That's great advice. Thanks. I think I can manage ironing some basic things now. Summary Part 4 of the dialogue dives into ironing techniques, including following care label instructions, adjusting temperature settings, ironing with the grain of the fabric, and using a pressing cloth for delicate items. Part 5 Garment Care Tips for Extending the Life of Your Clothes all right, Catherine, I feel like I've learned a lot about washing, drying, and even ironing my clothes. Is there anything else I should be aware of for laundry day? There are a few additional tips that can come in handy. One thing to keep in mind is pre-treating stains. If you have any stains on your clothes, it's best to treat them before washing. There are different stain removers available for various types of stains. Oh, that makes sense. Is there a universal stain remover I can use for everything? Unfortunately, not really. Using the wrong stain remover can actually make the stain worse. It's always best to identify the type of stain and choose a specific stain remover meant for that particular substance. For example, a stain remover for grease wouldn't work well on an ink stain. Okay, I'll definitely look into stain removers then. Anything else? Sure. Another tip is to empty your lint trap in your dryer after every use. This will help prevent fires and ensure your dryer functions efficiently. Lint trap? I wasn't even aware dryers had those. Yes, it's usually located inside the dryer near the door. It's a small compartment that collects lint and fabric fibers during the drying cycle. Emptying it regularly is important for safety and dryer performance. Noted. Is there anything I can do to keep my clothes looking their best even after multiple washes? Absolutely. Washing your clothes inside out can help prevent fading, especially for dark-colored items. Also, consider using a mesh laundry bag for delicates to minimize snags and tears during the washing cycle. Washing clothes inside out? That's a new one for me. These are all great tips, Catherine. Thanks so much for your help. No problem at all, Emily. Laundry might seem like a chore, but with a little knowledge and practice, it can be a breeze. Now you're well on your way to Laundry Day Mastery. Summary Part 5 of the dialogue explores pre-treating stains, using appropriate stain removers, cleaning the dryer lint trap, washing clothes inside out to prevent fading, and using mesh laundry bags for delicates. Part 6, Decoding Laundry Labels, Understanding Symbols and Instructions This has been so informative, Catherine. I feel much more confident tackling laundry day now. Is there anything else you can think of that might be helpful for a laundry newbie like me? Actually, there are a few things. One thing to keep in mind is reading the care labels on your clothes. They provide valuable information about washing instructions, drying recommendations, and even ironing settings. Following these guidelines will help you extend the lifespan of your garments. Care labels again. You mentioned them before when talking about ironing. What kind of symbols should I look out for? Sure, there are symbols for different washing temperatures a cold water symbol for delicates, a warm water symbol for most clothes, and a hot water symbol for sturdy fabrics like towels. 
You'll also see symbols for drying methods. A hang dry symbol, a tumble dry low symbol, and a tumble dry high symbol. Following these will prevent shrinking or damaging your clothes. That's really helpful. Anything else surprising on these labels? Sometimes you might see symbols for dry cleaning only. These clothes require professional cleaning and shouldn't be washed or dried at home. Also, some labels might indicate hand wash only for delicate items that need gentler care. Got it. So, reading the labels is key. Is there anything specific I should do to store my clothes after they're clean and dry? Absolutely. Folding or hanging your clothes properly will help them maintain their shape and prevent wrinkles. Heavier clothes like sweaters should be folded and stored on shelves, while lighter clothes like shirts can be hung on hangers in your closet. Folding and hanging, huh? Any specific folding techniques I should know? There are different folding methods depending on the type of garment. For example, the KonMari method is a popular folding technique that involves creating space-saving little rectangles for your clothes. You can find tutorials online for different folding methods. KonMari folding? I'll definitely have to look that up. Thanks for all the tips, Catherine. I feel like I can finally conquer laundry day without any disasters. Summary Part 6 of the dialogue emphasizes the importance of reading care labels for washing instructions, drying recommendations, and dry cleaning or hand washing needs. It also discusses proper storage techniques like folding or hanging clothes and mentions the KonMari folding method as an option. Part 7 Laundry Hacks for New York City Apartment Drying and Laundromat Tips So, laundry day seems a little less daunting now, but is there anything else that might come up unexpectedly? Well, laundry can sometimes throw you curveballs. For example, what if you shrink a favorite sweater? Oh no, that sounds like a nightmare. Don't panic. There are ways to try and salvage a slightly shrunken sweater. Soaking it in lukewarm water with a bit of hair conditioner for a while, and then gently stretching it out while it's wet can sometimes help. Hair conditioner? Who would have thought? It's a household trick. Just be aware that it might not work miracles, especially for severely shrunk items. Always best to follow the care label instructions to avoid shrinkage in the first place. Good point. Is there anything else that might go wrong? Sure. Sometimes you might encounter stubborn stains that don't come out after washing. Don't despair. There are various stain removal techniques you can try depending on the type of stain. Sounds like I need to do some research on stain removal then. Exactly. The internet is a great resource for stain removal tips. Just be sure to test any stain remover on an inconspicuous area of the garment first to make sure it doesn't cause discoloration. Testing first? That's smart. Is there anything else that might surprise me about laundry? Maybe. Sometimes, clothes might develop a musty smell even after washing. This could be due to improper drying or leaving them damp in the washing machine for too long. Ugh, that's not ideal. What can I do to prevent that? Make sure your clothes are completely dry before storing them. Leaving them damp can create a breeding ground for odor-causing bacteria. Leaving the washing machine door open after a cycle can also help with air circulation and prevent musty smells. Those are all great tips, Catherine. I feel so much more prepared for laundry day now, thanks to you. Summary 
Part 7 of the dialogue explores solutions for unexpected laundry mishaps like shrinking clothes and stubborn stains. It also discusses preventing musty smells by ensuring clothes are completely dry and promoting air circulation in the washing machine. Part 8 Embracing Laundry Day – A Positive Mindset and Efficient Methods Phew! That was a lot of information, Catherine. I feel like I just graduated from Laundry Day University. Congratulations, then. Laundry might seem overwhelming at first, but with a little practice it becomes routine. Remember, these are just some basic tips to get you started. Absolutely. Is there anything else you think would be helpful for someone new to New York City laundry, specifically? Sure. Since you don't have a dryer in your apartment, air drying will become your new normal. One thing to keep in mind is New York weather. Laundry might take longer to dry during humid or cold months. Oh, that makes sense. Anything I can do to speed things up then? A few things. As we discussed before, wringing out excess water after the washing cycle helps. Using a fan near the drying rack can also improve air circulation and drying time. A fan? Good thinking. Is there anything else specific to New York laundry situations? Maybe. Some apartment buildings in New York have laundry rooms with shared washers and dryers. If your building has one, be sure to check the posted schedule or reserve a time slot to avoid conflicts with other residents. Shared laundry rooms? That's something I haven't encountered before. What else should I know? Just some general laundry etiquette. Always clean out the lint trap in the dryer after you use it and be mindful of overloading the machines. Leaving some space allows for better cleaning and drying for everyone. Lint trap etiquette noted. Is there anything else surprising about laundry in New York? Not really, but some laundromats offer additional services like dry cleaning or wash and fold options if you need them. Wash and fold? Sounds convenient. This has all been incredibly helpful, Catherine. Thank you so much for taking the time to teach me laundry day ropes. No problem at all, Emily. Remember, laundry doesn't have to be a chore. Think of it as a chance to take care of your clothes and extend their lifespan. Now go forth and conquer laundry day like a pro. Summary Part 8 of the dialogue focuses on laundry in a New York City setting including considerations for air drying during different seasons, using a fan for faster drying, navigating shared laundry rooms, and practicing laundry etiquette. It also mentions additional laundry services available at laundromats.